Oh, did they just discover a time anomaly at Skinwalker Ranch? This is crazy. All right, get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like, please subscribe, join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, I love The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. I didn't cover uh, the uh, episode last week, episode eight, because there didn't seem like there was enough there to talk about. I will go over it very briefly, but then we have to talk about episode nine, where we get into some really juicy stuff. They do some uh, really cool experiment and they have some interesting stuff going on. So I'm going to read from my notes. I'm just going to give you a breakdown of those two episodes and my thoughts on it. Um, episode eight. Yeah. Okay. My notes last time, the GPS show that Jay Stratton went underground at a particular place when he did not go underground, uh, just driving along the road, but the data results showed him going deep underground. And they did this interesting experiment because Jay Stratton, of course, is, uh, Axelrod, uh, who is an important figure in Skinwalker Ranch, uh, lore. Uh, he's the guy that's haunted by a werewolf. Uh, he and his whole family and other people have seen it too. And, you know, of course, he was at one point the director of ATIP. And, you know, so he, he's a big wig, big, big uh, important guy in ufology and uh, definitely an important guy in Skinwalker Ranch. And, uh, yeah, when, when he was studying it, he got this weird hitchhiker effect where this uh, Skinwalker or werewolf or dogman or whatever it was uh, appeared at his home after he had left the ranch and his whole family was seeing it. So when he returns to Skinwalker Ranch in episode eight, the team is really interested uh, to learn uh, how the ranch responds to somebody who it already has had such a big claim on. So they, they attach some sensors to the car that he's driving around. They attach some sensors in the car. Oh, the next day, they, 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 without him, they follow the same route as a control to see if the sensors pick up the same things that his sensors were picking up. And his sensors, the data pointed to him going deep underground. That's what the GPS showed, uh, uh, you know, where he went in his, in his journey. But of course he did not go deep underground. That was some sort of weird response by the ranch, some sort of energetic or, you know, whatever re response from the ranch to Jay Stratton. And it did not respond that way to the others. So they bring Pete Kelsey, a technologist to see if he can find out what's going on. Uh, he has a multi-spectrum camera on a drone. Meanwhile, they bring a diller uh, to drill the mesa. Yeah, it's about time they drill the mesa. Well, what's taking them so long? Drill that damn mesa, guys. Uh, Caleb and Dragon explored the south field. They find some more bones. They talk to a vet. She says the two holes look like the teeth marks of a predator, but bigger than a coyote. A giant wolf, perhaps? Uh, briefing on Pete Kelsey. He finds uh, three weird circular formations between drill site and homestead two, right where Jay Stratton's GPS went underground. They also found some weird lines that made the grass grow differently near homestead two on a perfect east-west line in the area where the Shermans said not to dig. Did Bigelow dig there? They think so, and they're going to dig in a different direction, but at that same place. They dig. They find stri striations of some weird material. They dig in another location and find same striations. It seems deliberately placed. Uh, this weird material deliberately placed in these lines at this particular location on the ranch. Really weird. Uh, Travis theorizes that maybe beings put that material there to mark the location. Uh, he also says maybe it's functional somehow. Maybe it's, it's some sort of circuitry, circuitry in the earth for some reason or performing some functional purpose. Uh, they send the material to university to get analyzed. It turns out it's the same mud that's inside the mesa, but somehow seemingly deliberately placed in these five lines near Homestead 2. Really weird. So 
Yeah, so that was it for episode 9. I didn't think that was really worth doing a whole episode on its own for, but it really is weird that you have these weird lines in the in the earth that are composed of this weird material from deep within the mesa. Uh, and, and the lines are, you know, like several feet down. down. It's not like right on the surface. You know, they had to detect it with the, these uh, 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 sensors. So anyway, episode 9. Uh, yeah, what is that thing? What's going on there? What is that? And, and what's up with the, the weird GPS readings with Jay Stratton where it shows him going underground. And then they found the weird, you know, uh, uh, anyway, it, it was weird. It was weird. But let's go to episode nine. Uh, they bring a team of physicists out who want to launch a weather balloon armed with sophisticated sensors and use radio waves to penetrate miles deep in the earth. Why haven't they done this before? Why haven't they drilled the mesa before? Why haven't they used some sort of ground penetrating technology to, before? You know, I, I get it that they're on a budget, but still, come on. Uh, give it the program, guys. Snap to it. I want to know what's down there. Meanwhile, Dragon and the caretaker couple uh, talk to a Ute conservation officer who shows them a location where two horses have been recently killed. They have been cleaned out from the inside, he says. No organs. So cattle mutilations, <clears throat> excuse me, but on horses in that general area. There were strange footprints around the carcasses. Some that had three toes like that, like a, like a chicken or a dinosaur. And that's something that also comes up in Skinwalker Ranch lore is uh, at least one particular case where they had these large splayed three-fingered footprints just like uh, a bird or a dinosaur and they thought it might be some sort of reptilian creature and uh yeah so you know interesting interesting is that a lizard being is that a reptilian is that an actual reptilian you know um alien or non-human i don't know uh, but they were about uh, six inches uh, long apparently which doesn't seem long you know large enough to be that big but i'm not really familiar with bird anatomy if a footprint is six feet long how tall is the bird or the dinosaur or if it's two-legged yeah i mean if it's you know upright uh humanoid how, how tall could that be seems like it would be pretty short still but you know a lot of beings are pretty short I don't know. I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think. Meanwhile, Travis gets technologist David Mason back out to conduct an experiment with thermal cameras. They launch a rocket and mortar to stimulate the blob anomaly over the triangle. Something caused the mortar to explode prematurely and for the rocket to break into pieces right around that 30-foot level. Yeah, it almost looks like they collide. You know, right at that 30-foot mark. It's, it's, it's odd. It's weird. It's, uh, you know, seemingly very unnatural. They launch again, this time getting an anomaly on the thermal cameras uh, that David Mason had set up. And the anomaly shows uh, it's warmer than the surrounding area. And this is, you know, up in the sky. Right then, a plane that's not transponding shows up. And Tom Winterton says it makes him feel like they're being surveilled. Well, I don't think it just makes him feel like they're being surveilled. I think they're being surveilled. Uh, last time this happened uh, was when that um, the blob anomaly first manifested or was caught on camera when they sent up a rocket and it exploded at 30 feet, catching that weird blob thing in the, in the air. And right then, a, uh, a helicopter showed up, an unmarked, non-transponding helicopter showed up. And the attorney general of the state actually tracked that down as a Black Hawk, Black Hawk helicopter out of a nearby military base that showed instantly as soon as the phenomenon struck down that rocket. So how did it know what was going on? What was it doing? Now, why did, why did another aircraft show up right when the anomaly struck down these other rockets? How does it know, how do these government, you know, people know to be right in the position, uh, right when these events happen? Is there some sort of remote viewing or prescience going on? Does the anomaly tell them, does it reach out to them and say, hey, 
these guys are shooting rockets and we're going to blow it up. You want to come watch? <laughs> I mean, no, really. I mean, what's, what's the deal? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. But if you have any thoughts on that, let me know. Because uh, that is really puzzling why the, the, the black helicopters show up uh, right when stuff is going down. Uh, they don't seem to intervene. Are they just chronicling events? Are they making sure the phenomenon doesn't get out of hand? Or is there some limits that they're trying to keep it in? Uh, is that what they're doing? Or are they are they there, you know, tamping it down and, and making it quiescent, making it go away um, and be quiet and nice? Is, is that the purpose of the, the Black Hawk helico helicopter in, in this plane? Anyway, so they analyze uh, David Mason's data, and they find out that the anomaly, the temperature anomaly, was right over the south field, right where they've been seeing a lot of UFOs recently. You know, the, the blue light or the purple light that Tom saw, and then he went over there, and there was a UFO following him, and a couple of other things that have been occurring over there in the south field, which uh, previously they haven't really investigated much and spent a lot of time uh, documenting or chronicling, but now they are because there's uh, clearly activity there. Uh, so the, uh, they launch another rocket, and interestingly, the thermal anomaly disappears. Of course, this is right after the plane uh, leaves, so does that mean the plane did make it quiescent? And, and make the phenomenon tamp down and uh, not uh, molest their, their, their rockets anymore. Stop molesting Travis's rocket phenomenon. <laughs> so yeah, back to the, they get together with the, the physicist, uh, the, the lead physicist, I forget his name, and they do a briefing about that weather balloon that they had sent high up in the air with those sophisticated sensors and that radar technology that was going to penetrate the ground. We don't actually get the ground penetrating results this time, but we do get some really juicy stuff. Um, they see that the magnetic, they see the magnetic field increase while the electric field decreases, which apparently should be impossible. It seems to indicate the balloon sen sensors ran into a field of extreme magnetic energy. And Travis was even saying that there seemed to be layers, layers in the air. And, you know, I think they, they stopped encountering anomalies at 10,000 feet or something. So, uh, but, you know, uh, for a long time, they were encountering, encountering these layers or fields that were really strange and had this high, high magnetic property. I, I don't get it. I'm not a physicist. Uh, but, yeah, there was a field of extreme magnetic energy. Um, and that was right where they... Uh, yeah, right where they pulled the metal out of the mesa originally, the electric field jumps. And here is the most exciting part about all this. They found, they find a time anomaly, a quarter second time anomaly. I don't quite understand that. I wish they had explained that more and maybe they will in the next episode. Um, but there does seem to be some weird time shenanigans going on. What does that mean? They've got weird magnetic readings. They got a temporal reading, a temporal anomaly, a time anomaly. Um, is this evidence of a portal? Is this a wormhole? What's the deal? What's going on? What do you guys think? Is there a, a portal over Skinwalker Ranch that's causing all these sensors to go crazy and giving them weird readings? And that's why they keep on shooting things down. But if they shoot too much down, then the black helicopters show up and say, hey, keep it down, phenomenon. Is that what's going on? Or is it something completely different? I'm flummoxed. I got nothing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, yeah, they conclude the briefing with the understanding that the physicists uh, are going to continue crunching the data, and uh, we will hopefully in the next episode get some insights into what is under the ground, because this uh, technology apparently can penetrate miles uh, beneath the surface. So we might get some insight into what the hell is going on under the ranch. Of course, their sensors are very likely to be frustrated and confused, and they're going to get crazy, weird, anomalous readings that don't make any sense. That's what I'm expecting. I would be shocked if they actually got some concrete data that showed a giant 
ship or you know tunnel system or a base or what have you uh, under the ranch. But you know, I, I would love to be proven wrong on that. Uh, but really, really juicy stuff. A time anomaly. That's the first time I've seen that associated with Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, they said it was the first time such a thing had ever been measured. A, a quarter of a second uh, time anomaly. And again, I wish I could explain that to you better. They went by it pretty quick and I didn't quite get it. If you've seen the episode and you understand it better, or at all, <laughs> please let me know in the comments below. Either way, a really juicy episode. We're getting some really interesting data coming out of Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, it continues to be a terrific show, and uh, I don't know if we're getting any closer to understanding the secret of Skinwalker Ranch, but at least we're getting some stuff around the edges. We're getting a lot more stuff around the edges now. And uh, now that we've got uh, these uh, high caliber sensors and sensor data and qualified people looking at it repeatedly over years, in the public purview all the bob bigelow stuff you know that's been locked up we don't have access to basically any of that that is all classified why is it classified how is that possibly a national security uh, threat you tell me guys i don't know uh unless just the phenomenon itself can be considered a national security threat but you know they've been keeping this stuff secret for 70 80 90 years uh, or longer potentially and I don't expect them to start ponying up now however now that we live in the age of disclosure in the age of uh, Lou Elizondo and Dave Grush and now we've got that letter from the Canadian guy uh, showing uh, very clearly that there is a multinational alliance to retrieve and reverse engineer UFOs then you know, and I'm, I'm waiting, by the way, for that to become news. Is that going to be on CNN or MSM or, or Fox? You know, are the, are the major outlets going to cover that story? It's huge news. If they don't cover that, that story, that is, that is a damn shame. And that just shows how complicit the media is in the cover-up. But anyway, it has nothing to do with Skinwalker Ranch. But let me know your thoughts on uh, this terrific episode and this really unusual data that is starting to come out. I love it. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Smash the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. Don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. I would love to see you there. And if you would share this video on social media, that would be super helpful. If you want to support the channel, there's a PayPal link below. Leave a super chat. Buy one of my books. If you like science fiction and fantasy books, you very well might like my books. I'll also link in the description. And there are plenty of other videos for you to check out on the channel. Until next time, this is Jack with Cosmic Road. Signing out.